All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. And this isn't something that you're going to hear a lot on YouTube, but lately I have been trying my hand at epoxy and it has turned out terrible. Uh, the first few tries, there was a big learning curve. I've watched a few videos and other people that do epoxy uh, that make it look really, really easy, but <laughs> there's a process. And if you don't do it just right, the projects don't work out. So that's something I'm going to be covering in the video is I'm going to go over the, the things that I used and the little lessons that I've learned along the way so far about what to do and what not to do. So if you ever thought about creating some stuff, you know, maybe like some little epoxy poured backfield projects, whether on a laser or a CNC, then uh, stick around and that's what we're going to be talking about. All right, so this all started back when I first got into laser engraving. That was something that I wanted to do, was to be able to take a laser and kind of, you know, cut out a shape and a piece of material, backfill that with epoxy and let it sit and then sand everything down smooth and have that nice, like, insert basically. And this is a piece that I made from my friends over at Butterfly Bridges. They didn't ask for it. I was just making things. And their logo just so happened to be the perfect logo to use to test to see how well I could do this. And I had a small piece of oak available. And it's an, actually a nice uh, quarter sawn piece of oak. And so I put it on the CNC and did that one. Uh, another one of these projects, which this one I almost messed up. And guys, like I said, I'm learning this stuff and I'm having to figure out exactly how I want to go about doing it, the depths to use and so forth. This one I did to keep up with my Jenny bits. And as you can see this, I don't know if you can see the color, uh, but I actually painted this red with acrylic paint before I backfilled it with epoxy. And so the recess here, even though the epoxy is clear, because I painted it red underneath, the red shines through. And that's uh, my, my buddy Cody. That's his logo for the Genie Bits. And this block is made specifically to hold the entire set, as it stands right now, of Genie Bits. Now, if he starts adding more, I don't know what I'm going to do. But for right now, there's 14 bits in the collection. And that's what this is for, is to hold the bits. And I'll do a little bit more uh, video on that and show you what it looks like with the bits in it here shortly. But... Another project that I found, because I just mixed up some, uh, some epoxy and was like, hey, I want to do a few things. Uh, this is a uh, little Clack Shack logo. This was actually done on the same smart Jinmitsu 3030. And all it was, was I took my logo and engraved it in a little piece of oak. Uh, this was another little scrap wood project. And when I was trying to figure out what all I wanted to test with the epoxy, this was already in my little trial piece box. Uh, and so I was like, you know what? I could backfill that engrave with black epoxy. And so that's what I did. And this is going to be my new coaster for sitting over here at the uh, command terminal instead of the slate one that I've been using. I think this one looks a little more, uh, a little better and a little fancier in my opinion. Uh, the other project that I did, and this was just something that I was doing for our house. My wife's in currently redoing our back deck and fixing up the, the yard, making it look nicer and all that. I was like, it needs a little more Clack Shack swag. And so I did our house numbers in an old piece of cedar. And what I wound up doing was I CNC'd the cedar and then I went back and painted it with black uh, spray paint, ran it through the planer one time to expose the wood underneath the black spray paint. And then once I did that, I just went and painted on uh, the epoxy over the top of it to try to seal in the color of the natural cedar. I'm hoping that maybe the sun won't tear the uh, color and, and fade the color out as quick this way. We'll find out. The epoxy may come off in the sun. Who knows? But this was a cool little project and it looks good right now. So for the next month or two, we should be good. Uh, I tried a couple of other projects, guys, but I found some pitfalls and I'm going to kind of walk you through and talk to you about the pitfalls but while we're doing that nothing says epoxy work like watching the actual epoxy being applied so i'm just going to throw you some video of the process of me mixing this materials up and using it and just walk you through it uh, the material that i'm using this is uh this is maker epoxy 
And this stuff came from over in Georgia while we were there at the Workbench Con. Uh, Total Boat had a display set up. I did attend a little brief introduction class uh, with Jess Crow, whose name is on the, uh, her name's on the jug there. <laughs> She teaches uh, epoxy classes throughout the country and she knows a lot about it. Now, the class I went to was a couple of hours. It was basically, this is epoxy. This is, it was a very, very, very brief class. Uh, some of the stuff that she talked about, I did pay attention. Some of the stuff, maybe I forgot. But I did discover some pitfalls in my process, but I'm working through that and it's getting to where the projects are looking better. I'm having a higher success rate other than destroying the first two uh, engraves not the fault of the epoxy but because this guy forgot to make sure the settings were correct on the flattening bit before starting the flattening process and let's just say the CNC made short work of those work pieces and destroyed them <laughs> but since then I went back I've got my settings fixed so that I can flatten them out and it's not trying to take such big bites and uh, hopefully we won't have that problem again but I'm going to go over to the computer and just show you some of the video footage of me putting the epoxy in, the process that I use. Not a professional, guys. Literally, this is the first time I've tried this to this level. I've done a few laser uh, repours, uh, lakes, uh, logos on tables and stuff like that, which were really, really simple. And I got lucky, apparently. <laughs> because I didn't get as lucky on these. Uh, but so, so far, I've only destroyed them with the CNC, not necessarily with the epoxy, except for a little bleed over that I, I didn't account for in the first project. So let's go over here and check out some of the footage of me putting these things together. All right, guys, so most important, parts A and parts B do not mix until you're ready to make something, until you're ready to actually go to the project you want to keep those things separate as well as any kind of materials, whether it be the mixing spoon or straw or whatever you're using to mix with. Once those two parts get together, it's going to become solid. So uh, don't even try to use the same stick to scrape the little cans. Don't do that. Uh, lessons learned from a guy who's just getting into this. Uh, secondly, uh, I have found that I have the best results uh, when doing laser projects or CNC if I take it down around two millimeters deep. Uh, if you're going to be sanding it rather than running it on a CNC, then maybe you don't need to go that deep. Uh, laser projects, you could probably get by if you're just going to be sanding, you know, millimeter and a half or so. Uh, but with me, I have decided that two and a half is going to kind of be my go-to for CNC projects. Also, if you're doing CNC projects, keep in mind if you use a V-bit, this is where I messed up on the first couple of projects I did. If you use a V-bit, the way that the V is shaped, when you surface the item, your text is going to get thinner and thinner the more you surface. Uh, so if you use a V-bit that's only going two and a half millimeters deep and you surface the top millimeter off of it, your letters are going to be significantly smaller, fainter, and it's just not going to work. So I would recommend either using a like a ball nose 16, uh, 1 16th bit, or if it's a larger engraved, of course, just use a flat end mill. Uh, but that's what I had to do on the block. The first version of this block that I did, I did with a V-carve bit. And once I surfaced it, of course, all the CNC work went away and the, the laser engraving went away because I didn't go deep enough. So when I did it again, I went back. The laser graving that you see me covering right now, that's probably about a millimeter and a half to two millimeters deep. I did it on the Atom Stack 40 watt. I ran it two passes so that it'd be really deep to avoid uh, erasing it during the surfacing on the CNC. Like I said, if you're sanding this with sandpaper, probably not going to be a problem. Uh, but if you're like me and I wanted to go and surface it with the CNC and I ran like a half millimeter uh, surfacing pass over the material, you know, you, you got to consider that that's coming off after you're done. So you want to make sure that you add extra in to account for that. And I didn't, and I messed up a couple of my little projects. So just note to self. And another thing that I came up with is doing this little project here. And guys, this is just a little rough CNC project that I did when I first got into this, got my CNC. And I've just kind of been evolving it since. Uh, instead of using pigment, you don't always have to use pigment. You can literally do like I did with this one and use spray paint in the background and then put the clear across the top of it. And you, you get a pretty cool looking finish. It's not going to be the same as if you're using the black pigment. 
but you can you can always substitute the different methods uh, depending on the look that you want and how you know pristine you want it to look or rustic or whatever the case may be. Uh, this, your imagination is your only limitation when it comes to this kind of stuff. And uh, that's what I'm doing here is just basically backfilling over top of the paint. Okay, day two on this particular piece because, yeah, we had a 24-hour curing time on the epoxy. Uh, what I've done here is I have taken the piece and I put it back on the plant on the uh, CNC and I, I did myself a little uh, like a half millimeter pass across the top of it, which removed the epoxy except for the epoxy that was in the, the letters and stuff like that. And now I'm going to go over it with uh, the black and the clear to do that, the make sure that everything is completely filled before running over it again. But like I said, always make sure you take into account if you're going to do it like I've been doing and you're actually going to be digging into the material. Just take into account that you're going to be removing part of the epoxy uh, that you're putting in there for the project. And uh, that way you don't erase your epoxy completely. All right, so now on this one, I'm going back with a little bit of clear all over the top of it. And what I'm trying to do here is in case I get any drips or runs or anything like that, I'm going to avoid hopefully uh, getting any staining uh, from the black that I'm about to apply. And I'm making sure that the laser engraved part is completely filled and that I don't have any voids there. Uh, once I do that, then I'm going to go back with the black and... Uh, kind of using the clear as more of a corral also so that it kind of keeps that black pushed back and so that it lets it go into the holes rather than just run across the surface of the board because you know I have flattened this with the CNC so I've got a really good smooth surface and having that clear uh, epoxy is just kind of acts as a corral to keep that from running just in case uh, and also seals it up uh, a little bit more just in case of the uh, it does try to run onto the other material. But we're going to get that on there, hit that with the uh, heat gun, and get it ready to go over to dry. All right, so this one's pretty simple, guys. I got black leftover epoxy that I didn't want to waste, and I'm just going to flood fill this thing, uh, trying to get it to settle down as deep as it will in the engrave. Luckily, this was a fairly deep uh, CNC engrave. I think this is probably about three millimeters deep, and so I'm just putting the epoxy in there. Get as much of the air bubbles as I can, trying to get it to set flat into the wood. And then uh, hopefully I'll have something cool once I run a flattening pass on it with the uh, CNC. All right, so fast forward a little bit, guys. I uh, had a little bit of a mix-up on the video, but uh, got that working. And so now what I'm working on is the one that I did for my friends at Butterfly Bridge. Uh, you missed all the mixing and all that because of my problem with the camera. But I've got that resolved, and I'm just basically taking it, putting the acrylic in the relief that I made using the CNC on this guy. Same process. We're not going to bore you with everything. Uh, yes, I'm using solo cups. Uh, those seem to work pretty well for me. Uh, there's probably something better out there, but it works, guys, so don't knock it. All right, guys, so I hope this helps, uh, gives you an idea. If nothing else, gives you the confidence to know that when you start doing projects like this, expect to make mistakes, okay? I know a lot of times we don't, as creators, we don't highlight the mistakes as much as we do the successes. And I think that's pretty much human beings as a whole. Uh, you're, gonna, you're definitely going to want to share the good experiences, but maybe not share the bad ones as much. But I'm here to let you know that I probably, when I'm starting a new thing, getting into something new, expanding my horizons to be able to create different projects, I mess up a lot of materials. That's going to happen. You're going to have to try different approaches. You're going to have to try different materials. Uh, if you're like me, you're trying to keep it on a budget. So the less materials you can use, the better. There's all these little pitfalls that'll come back to bite you. And you've just got to work through those and figure out in your scenario, in your shop, with the tools that you have, the skills that you have, what is capable. And then start working that. Once you've worked that for a little while and you see what you're capable of, then just push the envelope. Push the envelope a little further, a little further, a little further. And I wanted that to be able to add another level of luxury to certain custom items. Uh, a lot of people don't want to spend the extra money to pay to have them backfilled, but there are incidents and situations to where people do. So that was just, that's why I'm into this. With the CNC, it opens up a whole new realm of possibilities with bigger items, four foot by four foot, 
four foot by eight foot. And so I think that there's gonna be more epoxy in my projects in the future. But I hope the video helps, guys. I will drop links down below. I'm going to drop a link to Jess Crow's YouTube channel as well. Uh, like I said, she is the epoxy professional. I am just some dude in a shack with some tools making random stuff. So, <laughs> but I hope you enjoy the videos. I hope this kind of helps you adventure out into doing those new things because it is very rewarding once you actually get a successful product but don't give up just because there's a couple of trips along the way just keep keep pushing on start small Some small projects means less waste then work to the bigger projects but until next time guys be safe and have a good day